Hello there and welcome to Iron Port, proudly brought to you by Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Oil Company Limited, uh, West Blue Consulting and Ghana Community Network Services. Folks, this week His Excellency the President of the Republic delivered the State of the Nation's address and indeed the ports and harbors industry featured prominently. Mr. Speaker, our ports remain important national assets and we must manage them to improve trade and to the benefit of all Ghanaians. The government has introduced reforms, has introduced reforms at the import to improve efficiency. Among others, we introduced the paperless operations at the ports and goods can be cleared within one to three days. Going forward, we have set ourselves the goal of making our ports the most competitive in West Africa. In this regard, some further re reforms would soon be announced by government to enhance the competitive position of Ghana's ports and impact on the cost of living in our country. Ghana may be the toast of the world because of its economy. Our local textile industry has been struggling for years, and many textile companies have indeed gone under. We have decided to give it a major stimulus to help put it on a strong footing. The local textile industry has therefore been granted a zero-rated VAT on the supply of locally made textiles for a period of three years. We have put in place a tax stamp regime for both locally manufactured and imported textiles to address the challenge of pirated designs and logos in the textile trade. The Tema port has been designated as a single entry corridor for the importation of textile prints with a textile tax force in place to ensure effective compliance and reduce, if not wholly eliminate, smuggling of imported textiles. A new textile import management system has been instituted also to control importations of textiles. To modernize the fishery sector, $185 million of loan money has been earmarked for the construction of 12 landing sites and two fishing harbors in selected fishing communities in the country. Phase one will kick off in March at Axim, Mumford, Winneba, and Teshi. Recently, I cut the sword to commence work at the Jamestown Harbor Complex, which, like the development of Almina Fishing Harbor, is part of our plans for the fishing sector in 2019. And again, the Minister for Transport also met members of the press and updated them on the state of agencies that are under his watch. And of course, the ports and harbors industry dominated in his speech. The Minister of Transport, Kweku Ofori Isiyama, has announced his outfit is engaging more private organizations to develop the maritime industry to accelerate economic development and job creation. Speaking at the Meet the Press series in Accra, the Transport Minister declared that out of three container berths under construction as part of the Tema Port expansion project, two berths will commence operations by the end of June 2019. At the Tema Port, the construction of four dedicated container terminals to respond to the increasing trade volumes and address infrastructure deficit is currently underway. The first two berths of 16 feet draft will be completed and operationalized by the end of second quarter of this year. Kweku Furi Siyama revealed that work on the hospital road from the Tema port to the motorway will also begin by the end of 2019. Last cabinet meeting, cabinet has given approval to the Minister of Transport and Minister of Roads and Highways to engage APM Terminal, which is one of the operators of the port, that's MPS, what we call the Terminal 3, to engage them to finance the construction or the upgrade of the hospital road from Tema, from the port to the motorway. And we are hoping that this project will commence before the end of the year. Direct the Transport General. Minister also indicated that government has engaged an indigenous company, Ibistec, to build an on-dock multi-purpose terminal in Takradi Port at a cost of 350 million US dollars. The Takradi Port is also to have a first lift with the development of multi-purpose container terminal by a Ghanaian-owned company 
known at Ibistep at the cost of $450 million. For the first time in the history of this country, Ibistep is a wholly owned Ghanaian company. He further explained that a dry bulk jetty is nearing completion at Tekra Report boost bauxite exports. He said GPHA is constructing an oil and gas hub in Secondi Tekrade, which will create job opportunities. In our effort to eliminate double handling of bulk cargo to reduce costs at Tekrade port, the construction of a dry bulk jetty with 800 meters key wall is nearly completion. This development will improve the handling and increase the tonnage of bauxite for export. An executive instrument is before His Excellency the President and Adulan Kwekuf Ado to declare the area between the existing Takwadi port up to Secondi Naval Base as a port zone. DPHA, under the direction of the Ministry, is developing the area into an oil and gas hub and this will help the youth to acquire the necessary job that they are looking for. The minister further revealed that progress has been made on plans to construct a Keta port in the Volta region and a fishing hub in Jamestown in the Greater Accra region. The ministry is also aggressively pursuing the development of a port at Kita in line with government manifesto. In our manifesto, we did promise that if by God's will, the Nanad Danko Kufuado will become the president of the country, we are going to construct two ports, one at Kita, another one at Jamestown, which the sword, we cut the sword for the Jamestown fishing project last month. Ofori ACMA disclosed that government is committed to making the maritime trade more attractive, hence allocated some 208 million US dollars to finance the construction of 10 fishing landing sites in the coastal areas. Along the Volta Lake, construction and rehabilitation of fairly landing sites and facilities along the lake are ongoing at Dambai and Dambai Overbank, Yeji, Makango, Agodeke, and works are progressively steadily ongoing. So aside those positive outlooks delivered by the President as well as the Minister of Transport, uh, the Ghana Shippers Authority is also projecting an increase in cargo throughput in this year 2019 they are projecting somewhere around 10% increase. Take a listen. The Ghana Shippers Authority has projected an increase in overall cargo throughput of 10% for the year 2019, according to the Chief Executive Officer of the Authority, Benonita Besmak, who addressed the media on the shipping quarter and outlook for the first quarter of 2019. Their projection is premised on the expectation that the introduction of the first port rule for the transit trade would be managed in order not to deflect transit cargo to neighboring countries. The Shippers Authority boss announced that demurrage costs borne by importers reduced significantly in 2018. Demurrage payments at the ports of Tema and Takradi reduced from 676 million US dollars in 2017 to 59 million US dollars in 2018. The reduction in container demurrage and rent payments have been a priority has been a priority of the authority and it has rigorously pursued this through shipper education and sensitization. She said storage rent payment at Ghana's port increased slightly by 3.2% over the past year. She therefore stated the need for further shipper education in that regard. Benonita Bismarck again hinted that although the overall cargo throughput for 2018 increased by 8%, there was a slow trend of imports towards the third and fourth quarters of the year due to uncertainty in the shipping climate of the country with the introduction and ejection of some policies that affect the industry. It is important to note that whilst imports experienced the low growth of 1.2% in 2018, exports on the other hand grew by 24%. Prospects for continued growth in the export sector are very bright in the wake of the government's aggressive industrial policy. Consequently, we wish to project an overall cargo throughput growth of 10% for the year 2019. She suggested that ad hoc policies are done away with in order to present a business friendly atmosphere to attract more imports to the country in order to meet the projected cargo growth of 10% for 2019. This is also premised on the expectation that the introduction of the first port rule for the transit trade would be well managed in order not to deflect transit cargo 
to our neighboring ports. Outside the Ghana Shippers Authority's projection, also the Ship Owners and Agents Association of Ghana is corroborating what the Ghana Shippers Authority is projecting. The Ship Owners and Agents Association of Ghana say they anticipate a positive business outlook in the year 2019 with the coming into operation of the Tema Port Expansion Project. Speaking at a cocktail event to engage key stakeholders of the maritime and shipping industry to review the year 2018 and also discuss prospects for 2019, the president of the association, Robert Oram, said the current macroeconomic conditions in Ghana looks positive with rising GDP and falling inflation well I, I think when we look at the the macroeconomic conditions here in Ghana they look positive GDP is growing inflation is coming down um, so it should be a positive year particularly with the the new port opening um, that should all point to positive developments for the shipping industry in Ghana the members of SOAG, however, urged government to put in place measures to arrest the CD dollar disparities I'm sure that the main policy that everyone is interested in at the moment is how uh, government will arrest the slide of the CD. Obviously that has a very big impact on particularly the import business. Um, so I think that will be the, the key issue for many in the shipping industry is what will happen with the currency because uh, yeah, it has a big impact on business. SOAG described the year 2018 in the shipping industry as a good one with the increase of cargo throughput. The only way that we can bring others on board is to, is to have an open hand and an open heart and encourage everyone to do their business in a conducive and open environment. Most importantly, let's share best practices because I know all of you here have a lot, a lot to give to each other. Industry players present at the cocktail pledged their commitment to ensure that the port and maritime industry doesn't suffer a setback in the future. By like this year, the Shippers Authority is looking forward to putting something on the new scale because it's the problem that affects the industry. And I know that SWAG and the um, free forwarders and all of us will come on board because we know that if we can bring this, if we can hold this trend, it's going to even make our ports even more efficient. Now, those two organizations, the Shippers Authority and the Ship Owners and Agents Association of Ghana, are making most of their projections based on the uh, impending Tema Port expansion project. And the CEO of MPS, the uh, company that's undertaking that particular project, is assuring that in 2019, there's going to be special and also uh, quality service delivery when it comes to the port services. The Chief Executive Officer of Meridian Port Services, Mohamed Samara, has assured shipping lines of an efficient service delivery when the Terminal 3 of the Tema Port Expansion Project commences operation in June 2019. According to him, technology and a paperless system would be used to deliver efficient services to the shipping lines and the shipping public. Mohamed Samara disclosed this when management of MPS engaged shipping lines to brief them on the progress of work of the Tema Port expansion site. We have a serious productivity to offer to your ships. You know, so basically your turnaround should actually increase considerably if you give us the right ship in front of us and the right storage plan for that ship to operate. The CEO of MPS said, so far, the project is ahead of schedule and the first two berths, which is 76% completed, will be completed for use in June 2019. Mohamed Samara also revealed that 127 hectares of land has been reclaimed from the sea for the project. At a completion, he said, Ghana will be recognized as a major maritime hub and the most efficient one-stop port service center in the region and the rest of Africa. Our main focus is the terminal performance. We want to boost our capacity from the existing 900 million TEU to 2 million into 3.7 million in the future. We want to increase the vessel capacity so importers, exporters and you gain from the economy of scale. We want to handle bigger vessels. Our moves per hours has to you know, increase and the port turnaround time has to be faster even with the bigger ships. 
and thermal productivity. He added that fleet of cranes comprising seven STS and 20 electrical rubber tied gantry cranes have been ordered from manufacturers Shanghai Zenhua Heavy Industries, Shanghai, as part of efforts to leverage cutting edge technology to promote efficient and timely container terminal services in Ghana. So it appears a lot is expected in this year 2019 in this particular industry, the port and maritime uh, business. So we cannot wait to see the end thereof of this year 2019 when it comes to this industry and we'll be happy to announce the good news when we have one. Ion Port returns after the break on that note. Hello. Good morning. This is Samantha Wendy. I am sending a purchase order from S18 Ventures International. Our policy for new supplies is two containers to start with, but you must deliver within 30 days. Don't worry at all. I'm going to get you the four containers within 30 days or less. Bye. To get his pineapple slices from his country to his client overseas, Mr. Appiah and his representatives have to complete a number of regulatory compliance procedures to various international trade stakeholders. Hey, Bama, what's going on? Get it right. Using single window, Mr. Abia has completed all his international trade procedures through one portal. He has registered his company information, applied for the necessary permit, certificates and licenses, and all that remains is for him to get a text alert for clearance and movement of goods. And that's how simple facilitating international trade could be in a single window environment. You can offer competitive services to your trading partners in China America, even here, in a simpler, faster, and cost-effective way. Single window, the only way to Ghana's economic growth is in our hands. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology. Highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goal Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Welcome back from the Rick Still Watching Eye on Port. And coming up next, our local port news. And this includes uh, seven people who have been arrested for attempting to divert reefer containers that contain fish meant for the transit countries. These people diverted them into the Tema community uh, one market for home consumption, something that they have refused to pay duties because they said they were meant for the transit countries. This is despite all the warnings that the state security agencies have been giving out there that no one no one should ever dream of undertaking such a risky venture. Seven persons have been busted by the Tema Railways and Ports Division of the Ghana Police for having allegedly diverted seven refrigerated containers of frozen fish meant for Burkina Faso to cold stores in Tema for sale. The suspects were said to have allegedly diverted the 40-footer reefer containers fully loaded with fishes from the reefer yard at the Tema port to cold stores around the Tema Fishing Harbour. The Commissioner of Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Isaac Krenzo, during a media briefing, explained that a self-styled agent managed to falsify documents to clear the high-duty containers from the reefer yard to be transported to Burkina Faso. He said the goods did not reach its destination as the suspects, upon reaching a section of the road in Accra, removed the tracking devices fixed on the containers and redirected the cargoes back to some cold stores in Tema while they take only the devices to Burkina Faso. Before us are uh, some suspects that Commissioner's intelligence team have arrested in connection with the version of seven containers of frozen uh, mackerel fish. 
thank God the team was able to arrest these suspects. According to him, the suspects returned the tracking devices through public transport, but they were arrested upon the arrival of the tracking devices at the new plant transport terminal in Accra. He further stated that goods which were frozen fish had not been examined to prove that it was wholesome for the Ghanaian market since it had been described as transit goods. According to the commissioner, Customs has in recent times noticed that the smuggling of high duty and excise goods are on the increase as his division has already made some similar arrests in that regard. The Port Health, a unit within the Ghana the Health United Service, has engaged key stakeholders of the seaport industry to solicit in support in delivering their mandate in prevention, detection and management of health risks and hazards at the ports of Ghana. The Director General of Ghana Health of Services, EPH, Dr. Anthony Nsia sure Asari, said global threats of infectious disease outbreaks and other public health emergencies continue to be a major challenge to Ghana's health and global health security. Global health security is very high on the agenda of the World Health Organization. Today, infectious disease outbreaks constitute a major global public health concern. Approximately about 15 million deaths occur annually worldwide, which results directly from infections, and this constitutes about 25% of all of our deaths in the world. And Sub-Saharan Africa, which Ghana is part of it, he said the port health is doing its best to prevent, early detect, control and respond to international spread of infectious diseases without impeding trade and traffic and called for the support of all agencies to achieve such targets. So we have to be very careful, especially all our points of entry. That's the reason why Ghana Health Service, we are very serious of port health. And we are continuously be strengthening port health activities all over the years. We need to work hard and assiduously to address all gaps that have been identified. A lot of gaps were identified. And one of the gaps is that we have to be interacting with stakeholders and bring them on board. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority pledged commitment to support the Port Health to That's achieve its should... mandate. The Port Health Coordinator, Dr. Michael Ajabin, schooled stakeholders on food safety. Gladly chatting or documenting the item. Oh, today we cleared. 200 cars, 300 cars. Unfortunately, you didn't add, we also cleared 300 viruses because you didn't see it. Okay? And they are all part of the mix. So as our goods that are coming in keeps increasing, we should also strengthen our health security. The Tamaport Fire and Safety Department has held a three-day sensitization program at the Tama Fishing Harbor to educate food vendors and fishmongers on good housekeeping and fire prevention processes. The fishing harbor forms part of the Tamaport enclave and that any fire outbreak could have dire consequence on the port. Hence, the need for the constant safety engagement with those who ply their business there. The fishmongers were educated on good housekeeping and the need for them to rearrange their belongings in a manner that would Fire is very essential in our day-to-day -day activities. You know, so learning how to live with fire is key. Because if the message syncs well with the people, the incidents of fire occurring here and there will be reduced to the barest minimum. The general manager for Tema Fishing Harbor, Kumi E.J. Sam, said management is leaving no stone unturned in order to ensure that the fishing harbor becomes a steward and safe place for those who ply their trade there. Dangers are there and therefore it's something that we, we continue to do periodically on a quarterly basis. This is about the third time during this week that they have done that and we'll be sending it to other places also to educate them. Uh, until we see that almost everybody that comes here 
has some knowledge about how to keep their home safe. The members of the Tema Fishmongers and Smokers Association expressed appreciation to management of GPHA and the Fire and Safety Department for the education. International Pod News are next on your screens. The Voyage Data Recorder of the Sunken Stella Daisy has been located and retrieved according to Korea's Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries. Survey and Ocean Exploration Company, Ocean Infinity, utilizing the vessel seabed constructor for autonomous underwater vehicles, made the discovery three days after it started the search mission for the sunken oil career. Teams aboard the seabed constructor managed to retrieve the VDR and the bridge of the ill-fated Stella Daisy, which sunk in the South Atlantic two years ago on Sunday morning local time. Ocean Infinity that launched the search efforts with the deployment of seabed constructor from Cape Town on February 8th located Stella Daisy's wreck some 1,800 nautical miles due west of Cape Town at a depth of 3,461 meters in the South Atlantic Ocean. According to South African Maritime Safety Authority, SAMHSA, six people have lost their lives in an incident involving a vessel fire at the port of Durban. The authority confirmed the casualties, adding that the extent of the fire caused the vessel to list on its port side. SAMHSA informed that the unit in question was the Mozambique flagged fishing vessel Tropical One. There were no details available regarding the possible causes of the incidents which occurred on February 14. Authorities have so far launched investigations into the incident. A Singapore-flagged Afromax tanker has been seized by private militia with AK-47 machine guns in the Cameroon. According to Singapore-based ship management company Eastern Pacific Shipping, the vessel Barents Sea with 26 crew was seized at the Sonara refinery in Limbe. The company claims the action was undertaken by local Chatra DSC Marine in clear violation of the law. Eastern Pacific Shipping condemns this act of unprovoked aggression and strongly urges the Cameroonian government to enforce its security forces to safely and immediately release the vessel and the 26 crew on board in accordance with international law. According to local media, Cameroon's only crude oil refinery has been shut down since late January due to the lack of crude oil. The Barents Sea has been anchored off the coast since mid-December due to a financial dispute, her cargo still unloaded. The crew of the Barents Sea are apparently unharmed. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Now schedules of vessels in the port. Those at Anchorage, those expected in the coming week plus the Bank of Ghana exchange rate that you need to know to clear your goods out of the port, all next on your screens.
that's it for this week's episode of iron paul thank you for watching also thanks a lot to the entire crew particularly my man martin minta robert nantechi godwin kabuti solomon anderson jobone and joe lavo and also the executive producers of the program madame abna sewa opoku fosu and madame esther jebidonko thanks for watching